Hello Scapers, my name is Kadios, and thank you so much for clicking on the video. This guide will walk you through the most efficient way to train your crafting from level 1 all the way to level 99 as a free to play regular account or as a free to play Iron Man account. Please be sure to slap the like button to turn it from grey to blue, hit the subscribe button to change it from red to grey, and also ring the bell icon so you can stay up to date when all my new videos are posted. With that being said, let's get right into it. I'd recommend completing the Sheep Shearer, Goblin Diplomacy, and Mistelin Mystery Quest first, as the combined XP from all three give 950 crafting XP, which will take you from levels 1 to 8 straight away. From levels 8 to 16, it's most efficient for all free to play regular and Iron Man accounts to train using leather. If you are a regular account, Buy 85 pieces of leather from the Grand Exchange, a needle, and around 50 thread or so. Use the needle on the leather and make 2 leather boots, which will take you to level 9, then make 22 cowls from levels 9 to 11, make 35 leather van braces from levels 11 to 14, and finally make 26 leather bodies from levels 14 to 16. Sell all the leather items back to the Grand Exchange for some coins. For all Iron Men, you follow the exact same progression, however, you'll need to gather all your materials. Start in the cow pen in Northeast Lumbridge with a weapon and armor if you need it. Take a couple hundred gold with you, as well as a needle and some thread. Kill cows until you have a full inventory of cow hides. Head over to Ellis and Alcarid to turn your cow hides into leather for 1 GP each. If you need, head into the crafting store in Alcarid to pick up a needle and thread if you don't have any already. Craft the leather items in the exact same way, and when done, you might either sell the leather items to the general store in Al Karid, or simply drop them. For regular accounts, buy 35 silver bars and a holy symbol mold from the Grand Exchange, and head over to the bank in Edgeville. Withdraw your mold and all your bars, walk to the furnace just next to the bank, and use the silver bar on the furnace. Make all holy symbols, and run to bank the symbols that you made. Withdraw the rest and repeat the process until you hit level 20 crafting. Feel free to sell the holy symbols back to the Grand Exchange for some coins. For all Iron Man types, it's most efficient to make holy symbols from level 16 to 23. For regular and hardcore Iron Men, withdraw the best pickaxe you can and the Chronicle if you wish from your bank and equip them. If you don't have any law runes, Chronicle teleport and head to the Varak Southwest Mine or simply walk south from the Western Varak Bank. Mine the three silver ore and then hop worlds. I like to choose at most three worlds to cycle between when I mine the silver ore here. Once your inventory is full, head back to bank in Western Varrock, deposit your silver ore, and repeat the process until you have 71 silver ore banked. Then go to Edgeville, withdraw your holy mold and 27 silver ore, smelt the silver ore into silver bars, then click again on the furnace to turn the silver bars into holy symbols. You can pick up a holy mold from the crafting stores in Alcarid or Remington if you don't have one. Feel free to sell the holy symbols at any general store or the bandit camp in the wilderness if you're daring, though I personally wouldn't recommend that for hardcore Iron Men. If you have law runes, it's actually faster and more efficient to run them in this way. Have a chronicle and a staff of air equipped, as well as three law runes, three water runes, the holy symbol mold, and a pickaxe in your inventory. Mine all the silver ore in Varrock's southwest mine, hop worlds to fill your inventory, then teleport to Felidor, and use that furnace to turn the silver ore into silver bars, and again to turn them into holy symbols. You can sell them to the general store in Falador, bank them in Falador West Bank, or drop them. Chronicle back to Varrock's southwest mine to repeat. For Ultimate Iron Man, the process is similar to the regular and hardcore Iron Man. Follow this process if you don't have any law runes. Get a holy mold from the crafting store in Alcarid or Remington, and also the best or easiest woodcutting axe you can obtain. Equip a pickaxe and chronicle, teleport with the chronicle, and head back to the Varrock Southwest Mine. Mine the three silver ores and world hop, and continue doing so until your inventory is filled. Then head south to the canoe area and canoe to Edgeville. Do note, to use this canoe to Edgeville, you'll need to have at least level 27 woodcutting. Head to the furnace west of the river to turn your silver ore into silver bars. Once done, use your silver bars with the furnace and turn them into holy symbols. Once done, drop your holy symbols or sell them to the Varrock General Store after Chronicle teleporting back when you repeat the process. 
Repeat the process until you hit level 23 crafting. If you do have law runes available to use, follow the same instructions as the regular and hardcore Ironmen. Have a chronicle and a staff of air equipped, as well as three law runes, three water runes, the holy symbol mold, and a pickaxe in your inventory. Mine all the silver ore in Varrock Southwest Mine. Hop worlds to fill your inventory, then teleport to Falador and use that furnace to turn the silver ore into silver bars, and again to turn them into holy symbols. Drop them, or sell them to the Falador General Store if you like, then chronicle teleport back to Varrock Southwest Mine to repeat. The best way to train crafting from this point on as a free to play regular account is to cut gems. Buy as many uncut gems as you can from the Grand Exchange in addition to a chisel to cut them with. Because of trading limits, you can buy 10,000 of any uncut gem every 4 hours. If you can't buy all these gems in one shot, simply buy as many as you can afford. You can cut sapphires at level 20, emeralds at level 27, rubies at level 34, and diamonds at level 43. Once you have the gems banked, you're able to cut around 2,640 gems per hour with perfect game ticks. On the screen now are all of the free to play gem types, how many of them you will need to buy and cut to reach 99 crafting with that gem in particular, and also how much it would cost in total after buying the uncut gems and selling the cut ones back to the grand exchange. Please be aware that prices today may be different than prices in the future, so I urge you to cut one of each gem and find the up-to-date cost on your own. The figures shown here are taken as of the posting date of this video. Out of all the options, I would personally choose to cut sapphires, as they only cost 2.3 million GP in total, and they're pretty quick XP per hour at 145k. One thing you could also choose to do to save some money is to make either a sapphire, emerald, ruby, or diamond ring with the cut gems that you crafted. You need to take a gold bar and one of the gem types to a furnace with a ring mold in your inventory. Then craft the ring accordingly and sell them back to the grand exchange. Though this is an option, I would personally only cut and sell back the gems to save time and hassle. If you're a regular free to play account with the intention of maxing free to play, I would only cut these gems to level 97 or 98. I'll explain shortly. Also, I do intend on releasing a free to play money making guide at some point in the future, so for the time being, I'd advise training your range from levels 50 to 99 at Ogres' in order to make the cash that you'll need to purchase these gems for your crafting training. This process is the exact same as before with the holy symbols, except now you'll be making tiaras. If you don't have any law runes, have your pickaxe and chronicle equipped, and chronicle teleport to the Varrock Southwest Mine. Mine your silver, world hop like before until you have a full inventory. Then head north to bank in Varrock West Bank and repeat the process until you have 590 silver ore banked for level 40 crafting if you intend on maxing your account, or 248,156 silver ore banked for level 99 crafting if you don't intend on maxing your account. Withdraw a tiara mold from your bank or buy one from the crafting store in Alcarid or Remington. Go to Edgeville and make your silver bars, then craft like before, but make tiaras this time. If you do have law runes, the setup and amounts will be as follows. Have a chronicle and a staff of air equipped, as well as 25 law runes, 25 water runes, the tiara mold, and a pickaxe in your inventory. If you do wish to max your account, you need to follow this progression. Mine all the silver ore in Varrock Southwest Mine, and hop worlds to fill your inventory. Then teleport to Falador and use the furnace to turn the silver ore into silver bars and again to turn them into tiaras. Drop them or sell them to the Falador General Store if you like, then chronicle teleport back to Varrock Southwest Mine to repeat. This will get you up to level 40 crafting. If you don't care about maxing your account, then you'll need 10,340 law runes and 10,340 water runes in your inventory instead in order to train this way to level 99 crafting outright. Again, this process is the same as before with the holy symbols, except we're making tiaras. Get a tiara mold from the crafting store in Alcarid or Remington, and also the best or easiest woodcutting axe that you can obtain. Equip a pickaxe and chronicle, 
teleport with the Chronicle and head to the Varrock Southwest Mine. Mine the three silver ores and world hop and continue until your inventory is filled. Then head south to the canoe area and canoe to Edgeville. Use the furnace to turn the silver ore to silver bars, then click again and turn the bars to tiaras. Drop them or sell them to the Varrock General Store when Chronicle teleporting back to the Varrock Southwest Mine. And again, if you do have Lawrence to use, the setup is have a Chronicle and a Staff of Air equipped, as well as 581 Law Runes, 581 Water Runes, the TR Mold, and a Pickaxe in your inventory. Mine all the Silver Ore in Varrock Southwest Mine, hop worlds to fill your inventory. Then teleport to Falador and use that furnace to turn the Silver Ore into Silver Bars, and again to turn them into Tiaras. Drop them or sell to the Falador General Store if you like, then Chronicle teleport back to Varrock Southwest Mine to repeat. This is where things become a little different for regular and hardcore Ironmen if you want to eventually max your account. We'll still be crafting tiaras, however we'll now be doing so using the crafting guild. Buy a staff of air from the staff shop in Varrock and equip it, as well as a brown apron which you can buy from the clothing store in Varrock. Grab the best pickaxe you can use from Nurmov's pickaxe shop in the dwarven mine and also the tiara mold. Lastly, equip an air tiara if you have one already, if not we'll make one shortly. Withdraw 556 law runes, 556 water runes, 12 tiaras, and 12 air talismans, provided you haven't progressed through the rune mysteries quest. If you have, or have completed rune mysteries, replace the 12 tiaras and air talismans with 24 rune essence. I have a guide that you guys can take a look at to effectively receive over 500 air talismans per hour. The link will be shown on screen now. The best way to get law runes are from ranging ogre shamans. Now, head south and enter the air altar. Craft your air tiaras or your air runes and then exit. Run to the crafting guild and drop your air tiaras or air runes. If you want to keep your air runes when you're training, equip a staff of water instead of a staff of air. Enter the crafting guild and mine all the silver ore for that world and then world hop. Fill your inventory with silver ore this way, then teleport to Falador. Turn the silver ore to silver bars using the Falador furnace, then use it again to turn the silver bars into tiaras. Use the bank in Falador East and repeat the process until you hit level 70 crafting. At this point with 70 crafting, you can make the fabled power amulet. It's most efficient to train your ranged, attack, strength, and defense to level 99. As you train these skills, you'll be receiving a different amount of gems as drops from monsters in the game. Personally, I train range from levels 50 to 99 on Ogre Shamans, and I'm currently training my melees to 99 using the Body Golems and Camdozel. These two monsters combined on average should bring your crafting from level 70 up to 80 solely from cutting the gem drops. This will differ however depending on how and what you train on, so your numbers may vary. Depending on what you trained on, you may or may not be around level 80. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use level 80 crafting as a base point. Levels 80 to 99 will be the exact same process like you did when you worked your way towards level 70 crafting. That is, making tiaras through the crafting guild if you intend on maxing your account. You'll need 8,769 law runes and 8,769 water runes to make the 210,456 tiaras needed to hit level 99 crafting. You'll also need to farm 105,000 228 air talismans or mine 210,456 rune essence to runecraft with for this journey. This will be the exact same process like you did when working towards 70 crafting. Follow the steps as by this time you should have all the law runes that you need from the combat training. Have a chronicle and a staff of air equipped as well as 8,769 law runes 8,769 water runes, the tiara mold, and a pickaxe in your inventory. Mine all the silver ore in Varrock Southwest Mine, hop worlds to fill your inventory, then teleport to Falador and use that furnace to turn the silver ore into silver bars, and again to turn them into tiaras. Drop them or sell to the Falador General Store if you like, then chronicle teleport back to Varrock Southwest Mine to repeat. And with that, this video is now concluded. Thank you for making it through to the end of the video. Please like this video, subscribe, and ring the bell icon if this video guide helped you in any way. 
Also, if you'd like to join the Fox Den Discord server, the link will be in the description below. Lastly, I do stream live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Gaming, so feel free to hop in and say hi. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya!